<laughs> Go, say it. Oh wait, both are of you. you. Are you recording? Yeah. Girlfriend wrestling show. Not his girlfriend. Oh, yeah, because they're not my girlfriend, I hope. I'll talk. Okay, go. Still recording, guys. You're going to see yourselves on, on, on YouTube. <laughs> Say it. You're watching the Hobo and not his girlfriend wrestling show. Yep. You want to say it too? What did I say? You say you're watching, you're watching the Hobo. Say that's Hobo Tom. What? Yeah, that's Hobo Tom. Yep, Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom? Hobo Tom. Yeah. Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom? Hobo Tom? Alright, Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. Yeah. Hobo Tom. Yeah, see? It's, Hobo it's, 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 Tom. Easier to chant that way. Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is currently out. I think she had a prey to cover. Been a very famous photographer. You shall, you will at least one day learn what her true identity is. Um, but right now I'd like to thank everyone for watching. As you saw by the promo, I'm increasing my production quality somewhat. Even though the lighting was terrible at, at, at the NXT event today. The multicultural center. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And tonight we're going to talk about NXT. 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 Which was, for some reason, a tale of two shows. NXT, when they come to Daytona, is really becoming that. The first half of the show was amazing. The second half, minus. The one match was so so, and the main event featured someone who should not be in the main event picture. Although the other gentleman definitely belongs in the main event picture, especially at a house show like this. I don't know, I'll, I'll get to that when the time comes. Um, running a little bit late, which I don't like to do. Again, I had to go to work today, work, gym, and meet up with some people. And they were running a little bit late. So they probably did have an autograph session. It was a fairly long line when I kind of peeked in. So I have no idea who was at that autograph session. But that, again, is always one of the fun things that NXT does. Again, if you have a chance to go to an NXT event, Go. Um, I know here in Daytona Beach, really, for 10 bucks, if you get there at the right time, you can find good seats. If you don't get there at the right time, depending on the venue, you can still find good seats. And again, it's not like there's anything else better to do in Daytona Beach during the night. But let's get to some wrestling! And again, I'm going to try to show some videos from this. Um, I'd like to give some kudos. Because they actually had a professional security staff where they were just kind of like wandering around, making sure no one was videotaping the whole match. Because I understand that that sucks. They do have to make their money somehow. But there weren't any real spoilers. I mean, there was one new guy. Local, I guess. Maybe. Maybe when they don't do the surprise things. Maybe they're more lax. Maybe they're like, hey, Hobo Tom, you're not videotaping the whole thing? Enjoy. Pass on your goodness, the fruit of your labor to others so that others may witness the grandeur of NXT. So let's get to some wrestling matches. Um, the first one, we have one of my favorite tag teams. We have Heavy Machinery and Jesse. Versus Rocky and two others. I didn't catch their name. Maybe you'll be able to catch your name after this. Heavy 
machinery. Yeah. Heavy machinery. Yeah. Heavy machinery. I mean, heavy machinery, Otis is amazing. He's a very good talker, constantly talking. Um, you have to love it. And even when the other wrestlers start to acknowledge the fans, the others say, oh, you suck. I know you suck. Even if it's something simple like that, at least the wrestlers are acknowledging the fan. They're beginning to build somewhat of a face relationship with the fans, which is always good. Then Jesse's getting so much better from the first time I watched her. That was amazing. Um, it was a really fast tag team action. I was shocked. Jesse's really good. At one point, they used Jesse as a battering ram weapon, using humans as weapons. That's a good thing. Yeah, it was just really good. Um, I, I don't know who the Asian woman was. I think I've seen her before. Where she comes in, does all of her kung fu stuff with fans. Might not even be kung fu stuff. I don't know what most martial arts are called, really. All I know is that she looks from the Orient and has the Oriental style fans. So she's just like hidden half the time. She wants nothing to do with heavy machinery. Whereas Rocky and the guys say, yeah, we'll take on heavy machinery. 
Rocky sucks chant. I mean, Otis gets hot tag. I mean, this was a really fun match. This was, this is the way a match, this is the way the whole event should start off. And the fact that this is a surf and turf match. Then we go into the second match of the evening. Yeah, it was a really hot crowd, which, which is good. If, if the crowd's hot, the crowd's into it. Even if you're not into it, or, or, or if you have that wrestling fan near you, sometimes it gets good. Um, so, so we had, um, I didn't catch his first name. Williams versus Punishment Martinez. And this in itself was a kind of fun match. Um, again, Williams does the whole sit-down thing. So, of course, when he does that, the crowd goes, Holy shit! Williams, again, he's developing a much better character than his old thing of feed me power or feed me energy. Um, Punishment is looking pretty good, too. Um, it was really a heavy striking match. Again, the, he, he'd worked the sit into the match when he was in the corner, and Punishment Martinez went to go hit him with something, and he did the sit and missed. So, again, it was a fun, action packed match. Oh, well, well, remember, the thing is, for like the longest time.
Even though Punishment Martinez won with a falling choke slam, this is a fun match. I was entertained. The crowd was entertained. This is a cheeseburger match. And the third match of the evening. And this, for some reason, when the crowd's hot and the wrestling's good, and the wrestlers seem excited to be there in Daytona Beach, it goes really quick. And for this, we had Gonzalo, no, Ramirez, a.k.a. Texas generic, generic wrestling woman, and Aaliyah, who went full heel, she even tore off one of her own signs. Not even heels do that. Versus, I just can't pronounce Condole. I, I, it's not that, but it's Condit versus Io Shirai.
and Condit is obviously much quicker than Texas and Ramirez. And for the most part, it was a really fun, good match. Um, Ali again, she's she, she's getting a new persona. She's now that cowardly heel. And if done right, this could work. I don't think there's no way she's going moved up to main roster anytime soon, though. Maybe for a spot for a wasted spot in the Royal Rump the Women's Royal Rumble. That's about it though. Uh, and for the most part, Condit's a very technical wrestler, very skilled in jiu-jitsu. You can tell that she knows her stuff. However, all the technical stuff in a wrestling match can go out the window because the other because Ramirez is so much stronger. She just picked the um, I know the first thing Condit went for was a standing Juju Katami standing armbar. Ramirez just literally picked her up, cradled her up, brought over her, her ring, and dropped her on the turnbuckle. And there, her and Elias started to just wail on her. Man, there was a good double team suplexes. There were good taunts by the heels. Elias really developing in that area. Uh, um, Condit, she was for the most part taking taking the beating. Again, you have a strength versus speed, so you do that clash of styles. Not like that, you you suck, champ. Which is good because then she jaws with the crowd. I don't fuck. She starts jumping out. I don't fuck. It's funny. Um, Condit uh, again definitely knows her jujitsu. Um, I tried an S go, and then hit, and then well, they try to go for a double suplex. Couldn't get that, and then the Ramirez woman couldn't get the single single suplex. And then Io Shirai won with like a package power bomb. Is that her finisher? No. I forgot how she. Oh, it was actually a pretty big moon. I think. Yeah. Um, this was a really fun, enjoyable match. This is another one. Because it told a story and there was so much crowd interaction, this was a good surf and turf match. And I'll say this, I do apologize, the lighting was off. Um, I don't know if it's because at nighttime and they didn't have that many artificial lights. It's it's a gym, so it's really meant to be used during the day. And it's pro wrestling, so you want to give it a little ambiance, but it was really dark. Then in the next match, it was... Donovan Dijak versus Matt Riddle. I just want to call him Riddle. It's Riddle. Donovan Jijak versus Matt Riddle. Bro, 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 bro.
Matt Riddle's a very technical wrestler, very submission-based wrestler. Um, Dijak, again, he's just stronger. Again, showing his strength. Much heavier hitting match. Um, he did like a suplex toss. He like picked him up his suplex and just like threw him off his shoulder. I mean, that just shows you really the strength. And of course, there was a chance of let's go, bro. Um, there was a good trade chops. Post it all online. It's fun. And then Dijak, he's showing that he's strong, too. Because at one point, there was... Um, Dijak did kick out of a bro to sleep. And the bro kick. And I was shocked. Like, no one kicks out of that combo. Or used to kick out of that combo. Again, yeah, it was just really good. Um, I wonder... If these two ever wrestled in the Indies, I know Donovan Dijakovic wrestled as Chris Dijak in the Indies, and Matt Riddell was Matt Riddell forever. And it was really good. Um, then there was Matt Riddell bust out. It's like sleeper suplex, which was amazing. And again, this really was. Fun quality match. This was a, even though a Matt Riddell won, but it showed off Diamond Dijak's strength. It showed off Matt Riddell's strength. It showed off Dijak's weaknesses. It showed off Matt Riddell's Matt Riddle's. What? Seeing that? Ugh! I gotta cure myself of that. But this was a really fun surf and turf match. And the fifth match of the evening was something Rio. And he's really good. He was a face. This is weird because this was a, a somewhat face on face match versus Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling.
wow, when Johnny Gargano gets in that ring, he's small. I mean, Rio doesn't look anything spectacular, really. But, man, Johnny Gargano is tiny. There are fears if he ever does go to WWE, he's going to be leading that 205 division, which he probably could. It was a really mixed crowd. I mean, they, again, you have the Johnny wrestling. And then it was Johnny, good guy, Johnny sucks. Some of these fans do watch NXT, at least on the TV. Again, the fact that they Johnny didn't do it. I wonder, because I know they pointed more towards Candice LeRae. And who might have been to beat down Alexander Black. By her husband, Johnny Gargano, by nefarious means. But again, this was a this was actually a really darn good fun match. Rio can move and Johnny still has those moves. Mage, fast paced match. They were giving up some pre stiff kicks every so often. Um, again, you have, you have Johnny Wrestler versus Johnny Failing Chance. Johnny Wrestler, Johnny Failing, Johnny Wrestler, Johnny Failing. I mean, Rio really looked good. Um, I mean, he kept up for mo most of the match. Again, Johnny Gargano eventually did win. And this was a really fun match. This, in, its, in and of itself, was a surf and turf quality match. Just like you would expect from Johnny Gargano. And then right before the intermission...
continue to flatten that. <laughs> Don't put your hands on them. Oh, he just wanted Yes, I am back. And we just saw chilling turn of events with Alexander Black showing up in the ring, chasing Gargano out, giving a real black the black mass. Good stuff. Then we again have the intermission, just like I had. And then the sixth match was the un un undisputed era. For life. And that consisted of Kyle O'Reilly, the returning Bobby Fish, and Adam Cole, baby! Crowd popped heat for him. Boom! Adam Cole, baby! So you're going to hear a lot of Adam Cole baby references throughout this entire thing. So this should be really fun. Baby! And they took on... The Mighty TM61. And... Someone Muda. I didn't catch their first name.
this should have been really fun. I mean, first of all, it always starts off with Adam Cole, baby. I can't get enough of that. That's just the greatest thing. Adam Cole, baby, can really take a bump. I mean, he was kind of beat up for the first time. Adam Cole also knows how to play the crowd. In this instance, the Undisputed Era, they were the faces in the match, and you could clearly tell by the Mighty's reaction. Again, the Undisputed Era. Again, show great tag team cohesion, especially between Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. I wonder if they're free burning those titles a little bit. Because they just said that you're tag team champions. Adam Cole, baby! Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. They might be free to free burning it between the four of them. So that's a four way free bird. Because everyone knows that the Undisputed Era is composed of Adam Cole, baby! Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong. So they probably freebird it depending where they feel like going to. Roderick Strong is like, I'm not going to Daytona Beach. You can go over there, Bobby Fish. Which is really good because the last time Bobby Fish was here, he got busted open pretty bad. It was good to see the infamous Bobby Fish back. I think that was only one wrestling shirt I regret not getting was Bobby Fish's infamous shirt. Cause that's just cool. Baby! Man, it's going to be a couple more babies! Passed out. Um, Kyle O'Reilly again. With um, Muda. I mean, he, he, he didn't want him in. Kyle O'Reilly is so good at selling. He's so good at taking a bump. Oh my gosh. I mean, Bobby Fish in this match goes bonkers because... The Mighty and Muda guys just start like triple teaming poor Kyle O'Reilly. And it's really fun. It tells a really good in ring story. I mean, T TM6 one, I'll just call them that. A classic tag team action. Again, they know how to double team. They know when to double team when the guy gets in their corner. The one guy holds them, the other guy punches them. 
or he just gets shoved into the corner. You distract the referee, and then you beat up the guy. So it's really good. Bobby Fish has to be careful, though. He was getting a little too vocal with that referee. And probably got Kyle Riley a little bit extra beat up. Um, I think the only thing, I mean, the, the action was really good. I mean, you definitely know who the face is. You definitely know who the heel is. Uh, the Mighty's becoming a little bit better heel, heel faction. They're learning how to heal it up. It was kind of a soap place. I mean, when Adam Cole got the hot tag, when Adam Cole, baby, got the hot tag, and the crowd exploded. And then eventually, Kyle O'Reilly, I think, tagged in, and then he and Bobby Fish hit, hit their version of total elimination. And this was a really fun match. This, again, is another surf and turf match. And of course, because the Mighty just recruited this guy off the street, do not put your hands on the big guy. Never goes well. Then we have the next match, which was someone? I didn't catch the name. Again, the acoustics are normally pretty good. All depends a little bit on the announcer and said wrestling fans near you versus Mia Yum.
really good. I mean, the, the heel antics and taunts were amazing. I'll give her that one. I don't know how well she can wrestle. She can wrestle pretty good. Um, she can run the ropes and, and take the bumps, which is good. Um, and she always bring, like, lipstick in the ring. Like, lipstick was, like, brass knuckles or, like, an ice pick. It's weird. And this was definitely the kind of popcorn match, even though they did have the intermission, only because, again, the heel, whoever she was in pink, Except for like want to cover Mia Yim in lipstick, and when her lipstick would be tossed out, she would like demand stuff back. Tough. Oh, is that kid in the audience? <laughs> Boo. She did hit a flatliner on the outside though, which is really cool and really vicious. Um. Other than that, it was kind of a really slow-paced match. She would go into her mascara bag. I Yes, every so often. It was a one vicious slap, though. That was pretty good. And then Mia Yim, she won with the package powerbomb. <sighs> this was a good match. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. This is where that ham sandwich falls in. And then your main event of the evening. In this corner, we have the finest Kona. Kona Reeves? The heck is he doing in the main event? For the U.S. title? Versus Ricochet. Also should be known as King Ricochet. Because he is the king. He's Ricochet is still the best. I mean, what the heck is Conan Reeves doing in, in a U.S. championship match?
I mean, this is like such a downgrade for Ricochet. It's like, Ricochet has to face him? I mean, they could have put Ricochet versus. Who's on a mid level jobber? Oni Lorcan in a match for the U.S. title. That would have been good. Oh, is Oni Lorcan in the U.K. now? No, that's um, Danny Birch. Only Lorcan is free. Only Lorcan versus Ricochet. Roderick Strong versus Ricochet. And that way you can have the whole undisputed era tag along. Who else? Sullivan for the U.S. That would be fun. Let me think of one.
Raul Mendoza deserves the U.S. championship spot. Raul Mendoza is the fourth person versus instead of Kona Reeves. Whatever. I mean, Kona can wrestle. I mean, it's it's not a bad match. It's, Ricochet's still amazing. That I piece together silver videos, even though the lighting's absolutely horrific about this match, because I think of this match, the carry just didn't care. They're like, Kona Reeves. No one, watch a, no one wants to watch a Kona Reeves match online anyway. I mean, Ricochet, he's such a good worker. He's a solid seller. I mean, he honestly did try to make Kona Reeves look like a million bucks. So I'll give all the credit where credit is due. Ricochet, you're number one in my book. And yes, this is the right finger to tell you you are number one. Quinn Reeves, you're the other number one. I'll let you guess what that number one is. Um, again, cheating, going as a heel. And, and with um, Bourne, I guess? Victoria Bourne, I guess is like new valet. So I realized that she couldn't wrestle that good. <laughs> but she looks like a million bucks. And hey, he's the... Finest. Might as well have the finest next to you. Again, it's, again, he heals it up pretty good. I mean, Ricochet won really quick, though. It was weird because he didn't do the. He, he again does his Ricochet stuff. Don't get me wrong. He can still do the flippy stuff like no one's business, with the exception of Will Ospreay. Who else can do really flippy stuff? Son of Havoc can do some darn good flippy stuff, too. And Phoenix. I mean, he's really in that upper echelon class of flippy stuff, though. And it's fun and exciting. It actually makes people go, I didn't know you could do that. I can't do that. You can't do that either. We'd break our ankles, fall on our necks. It would be ugh, ugly. Ricochet can, though. I mean, it ended kind of quickly. And again, it's Kona Reeves who's good, but not up there. I mean, this is your, I hate to say it, and, and please, Ricochet, please forgive the hobo. But this was really a cheeseburger match. Again, that was NXT here in Daytona Beach. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I can't do anything about the lighting, folks. That's the venue's thing. I try to bring you wrestling the best that I can without having security take take my camera or cell phone or just flat out kick Hobo Tom out of the building. 
So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to get this video up as soon as I can, probably sometime on Sunday, I think. That's Saturday night. I have to do I have to do the editing stuff. Get to sleep. Maybe Sunday-ish. Again, everyone have